Today, we're going to find out why you got a lowball job offer. Okay, you're fresh out of college and you interviewed with Craft Tech and you nailed it. And they agreed to send you a job offer and you get the job offer and you look at it and you go, whoa, this is $20,000 below what I expected. Well, here's why that happened. Now, before I tell you why, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm. I want as many junior developers to get this information as possible. Now, I have a couple of slides and spreadsheets to show you. So if you want to follow along at home, you can grab them from my GitHub or my website. Now, to start, I know there's a general consensus out there that most companies want to pay you below market rate. I've been an engineering manager, and I can tell you that isn't true. I wish I could pay you more money, but sometimes I simply can't. And here's why. The salary on your offer letter wasn't decided when you interviewed. It was decided back in September or October of the previous year. Okay, so here's Crap Tech, which is a medium-sized company. Uh, they got a development team, which is led by team lead Ryan. And they got a QA team, which is led by Rayanne. Uh, Rayanne is a junior tester and a DevOps guy. Uh, the team lead Ryan has Seymour, who's a senior software developer. He's probably been there for about 13 years, and he's probably not going to leave. We have Sporty Ryan, who's been there for about uh, three years, total experience of seven. He's almost ready to be a senior developer. We have Posh Ryan, who's new. He's been there for about a year, and he's almost ready to kind of go off on his own, not be supervised when he's checking in work. And we have regular Ryan, who's a software architect. Uh, if this were a bigger company with more teams, odds are he'd be off on his own. But for reporting purposes, he has to report to Team Lead Ryan. Now, the entire software department is controlled by a development manager. Uh, this is the worst job in the world. And the reason it's the worst job in the world is because of this. The sandwich of anger. The development manager is always caught between two worlds. He's caught between the um, directors who can get him fired, and he's caught between the developers who actually have to do the work to make him look good. So and essentially, he can never win. And if you've ever been at a company where you've gone through three development managers in four years, this is why. So every year around September or October, the development manager and the IT director get together and they talk about their needs for the next year. So the first thing the engineering manager does is he asks for about 2% of everybody's current salary in order to give everyone on the current team raises. Now the director knows there's gonna be some new projects coming up. So he's budgeting for maybe two new people and he asks what the engineering manager needs to make that happen. So the engineering manager asks for two new people, one new mid-level developer, one new junior level developer. And he asked for $10,000 more to promote Sporty Ryan to a senior developer. So mid-level developer is going to cost between $100K and $110K. A junior developer is going to cost between $70K and $80K. So that leaves us with $217K for raises, promotions, and two new people. Now, I don't care how many books you've read on salary negotiation. There is no Scrooge McDuck money bin that's overflowing to give you money. All this engineering manager has is what he asked for back in October. That's it. And there's no way in hell he's going to be able to go back to his manager and ask for more money because that'll make his manager look bad. So you start looking for the mid-level person first because they're more important. And you finally find someone. And this guy is amazing, absolutely amazing. But he asked for 125. Ugh. And he's a mid-level, but he probably could be a senior. And you know this guy can hit the ground running. So what does the engineering manager do? Well, he gives the guy what he wants, but that means there's going to be less when that junior person rolls around. Okay, so we're going to do 125K for the senior developer. That leaves us with a budget difference of 15,000. So we got to bring whoever comes on to the junior developer position down to 65K. So you roll in and you interview and you do great and they want to bring you on, but then you get that offer letter and it's for 65K. So you counter and you say, oh, well, I want 75K. So the engineering manager goes back to a spreadsheet that looks exactly like this to try to figure out how to rob Peter to pay Paul. So he might give Sporty Ryan an $8,000 raise, and then he's going to try to find Seymour. And, you know, Seymour, uh, you know, Seymour's never going to leave. So let's just not give him a raise this year because it's not like he's going to quit. So that gives us an additional $4,000. And maybe we can bring you up to 69, and we'll see if you bite at 69. So that's why you got lowballed. It's not like there's some giant conspiracy to pay you less than market rate. They literally don't have the money, and they're running around trying to find it to meet your counteroffer. 
So do you take the job? I mean, that's up to you. If you have no other jobs present, it's certainly better than not working. You know, you can take the job and work there for a year, gain some experience and move on to another company that can pay you more money. If you have another offer and it's more money, I would probably take that job. But I do suggest you watch my video on whether you should take a job with more money or more opportunity. That'll be at the end of this video. So that's why you got lowballed. Your salary was decided months ago. And whether to take it, well, that's up to you. Good luck on your next interview.